Today's topic is power. Um, we're actually going to do a little bit of review first because, again, there's some clarification that I think is necessary before we move on to power. Power, I think, is pretty simplistic. The idea is pretty straightforward, particularly if we understand both work and energy. Power is a, a lot more simple than those things. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about, I'm going to give you a situation, and then we'll analyze it insofar as the energy is concerned. We've got a person, and the person is going to dive into a pool, and we want to analyze the energy as this person dives downward. Remember that the law of conservation of energy says that if there's a certain amount of energy in this system, that energy never goes away. It's just transferred from one type of energy to another. So let's say that this is one half of the distance down and that this person has 100 joules of energy up top. At the very top, that is 100 joules of gravitational energy and zero joules of kinetic energy. Right? Because the person isn't moving yet, but they are up off the ground and that gives them gravitational potential. As they jump, they're moving downward and their speed is increasing because gravity is constantly pulling them down. Um, but they are still up off the ground, so they have some of each kind of energy. Gravitational energy, as the person is falling, is constantly being fed into kinetic energy. So this is, if they're about halfway down, 50 joules of gravitational energy and 50 joules of kinetic energy. Right? So gravity has done, by this point, 50 joules worth of energy. And we can say that that is the change in energy, which is equal to work. So far, so good? I hope so, because you can't really answer, and even if you had a question, I can't answer that question. So, we're moving on anyway. Here, the person is just before they hit the water, and the person is really moving now. At this point, they have no height. Without height, m times g times h, that's the solar board, yeah. So height would be zero. Zero times anything ends up being zero. So the gravitational energy here, oops, zero joules of gravitational energy. And because the law of conservation of energy says that energy is never lost nor gained, we have zero joules of gravitational energy. That must mean we have 100 joules of kinetic energy. And I just wanted to go through that so that we uh, understood a little bit better the transfer of energy from one type to another. We can also say that by this point, the force of gravity is pulling downward. That force, they have moved some distance. We can actually find the distance that this person is falling with this equation. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to say that gravity has done, by this point, 100 joules of work. And that is change in energy. Is equal to work. So far, so good? Okay, the next thing I wanted to talk briefly about is the simple machines. A lot of you guys were missing out of class today, so I was just hoping to go over this for those people that missed it. Let's say that this person is standing on the ground, and they want to get to the top of this cliff. In order to get to the top of this cliff, they have to do a certain amount of work. If they have 100 joules of energy at the top, they've gone from 0 to 100 joules. That means that their work is equal to 100. What if that same person, let's say that this distance here is d, what if that same person climbed up, instead of having to actually climb this sheer cliff, which is incredibly difficult, requiring a lot of force, this person climbs up an inclined plane. They would still have 100 joules of energy by the top because their mass is the same, gravity is still working on them the same, and their height is now the same. So their total energy at the top is still 100. So we'll call this person person 1, call this person person 2, this is person 1's work. Person's 2 work would also be 100 joules. But one is so much easier. You would think that this person is doing a lot more work to get to the top of that cliff than this person is doing. But that's not true. In physics, these two people have done the same amount of work. 
the thing that's different, and the thing that makes a simple machine like an inclined plane work, and allow you to do, to make that work easier on you, because that's the purpose of a machine, to make work easier. The reason why this work is easier than this work is by the second way we can define work. Work is change in energy, but it is also some force applied over some distance. So long as the force is constant and our distance is in the same direction as our force. So this person has to climb straight upward uh, for a distance of d. If this is twice the distance, but the work ends up being the same, that means that one person has done 100 joules of work by applying a large force over a small distance, right? 100 joules, uh, a large force, a small distance. We could keep that work the same by having a greater distance, a large distance, and a small force. That's the idea behind simple machines. And the last thing I want to talk about today is power. Power is the expression of work over some amount of time. So when you look at something like watts, which is the energy that comes out of your electrical output, that's actually a measurement of power, the true physics power, not, well, all, all power. Power is just work, some change in energy over time. And that's how we measure power. Um, the unit for power is watts. We'll do a couple of practice problems for this idea, but just remember that our equation for power is doing some amount of work over some amount of time. The faster we do something, the, the, the smaller this number is, then the larger our power is, right? Or the more work we do, the larger our power is. That means that work is directly proportional to the power, where time is inversely proportional Meaning if this goes up, this goes up. But as time goes up, this actually goes down. Keep that in mind. Really keep this in mind. That's the most important part of this. Thanks.